In today's episode, I cuddle with a man named Mas Gredde. I met Mas in a small Swedish speaking town in Finland called Narvis. Mas is a man of faith, and conversations that I had with him has been priceless over the past year. He's involved in church ministry, and he has a deep passion for seeing the success of marriages and what it can do for families and for God's kingdom. Mats and his wife have followed a program from Delight Your Marriage uh, Ministries, and he's going to dive deep into that today. So I hope this episode blesses you guys and give you more knowledge about what a Christian marriage and dating should look like. The lessons. Mats, it's, it's a blessing to meet you. You want to tell us how we met? I want to hear from your perspective. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we met. Actually, yeah. I, I, I was thinking about this before the podcast. We met at the square here in Narpes and we did some evangelism and and then suddenly there came a guy out, a big muscular <laughs> guy with his little daughter in the stroller and, and we started talking and he turned out to be a believer and that was you. So, so that was very nice. That was the first time and then I don't remember how it continued, but you've been at our place a few times. Mm-hmm. We've been discussing, had some hard conversations. <laughs> yeah, a, lot of, a lot of those. <laughs> yeah. And when I met you, you was giving out tea and coffee. Yeah. 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 Or something like that to evangelize the people. Yeah. And you probably don't know what this is, a, a mukbang. I think today we're having a mukbang. So right now, if you see us eating some cookies and drinking, it's because we're having a mukbang podcast right now. <laughs> so... Getting into this, Moss is a really good friend of mine, is a brother of mine, and he is a part of Delight Your Marriage group. Him, you're your wife? Are you yeah, me from yeah. I, I done the program, and, and she is actually helping out with the, what do you call it, accountability groups. Yeah, so getting straight to the point, he's a, a master at Christian dating, I would say. <laughs> no. He has good advice, and that's what we're going to get into today. So... Can you tell us a little bit about the light of your marriage? Then I'm going to go straight into a bunch of questions that I have yeah. to ask you about Christian dating. Yeah, I, I, just my background. I, I, I've been married for, let's say, 2011. We got married in June. So, so it's, it's like, what is it? 13 years we've been married. Yeah. And, uh, and we started out quite... Uh, yeah, it was a struggle. The first year was really a struggle. I was not a very good husband. Uh, we figured out some things, and uh, a few years ago, I felt like we were kind of came to a plateau in our relationship, and I started to look for resources mm-hmm. how to get deeper into the relationship. And I found the, the, the Light Your Marriage podcast. I started to listen, and it felt like almost like hearing the gospel. <laughs> you know, uh, I was really, really touched by their. The, the, it was actually a few things. So one thing, the, this woman who leads the the Delight Your Marriage uh, Ministry, mm-hmm. she she Bella Rose, mm-hmm. she to- talked very very uh, positively about men, and that was for me a very encouraging thing. I like that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like when women can talk <laughs> about men. Uh, and not only that, and the other way around too. Yeah, yeah. Continue. No, both both ways, of course, but but. But, but I felt really blessed. And, and some, something struck, you know, when, when, when we talk, we, like men talk in between each other, you kind of understand, understand one another. But when you talk to a, to a woman, you kind of have to translate everything to their language, basically. And, but she kind of, <laughs> she was like a translator between men and women. Yeah. And, and I felt when I listened that she understood very well mm-hmm. or the man's perspective. For sure. Yeah. So that, that was very good. Uh, and you sent me some information about the light your marriage, but let's get straight into this though. I'm not gonna say from a Christian perspective or things like that. I want to just say from a perspective because I, that's how Christian mindset should be already. Yeah. But how should we look at marriage? For me, marriage is uh, one of God's greatest tool to express who He is. So if if we live well mm-hmm. as husbands and wife we will actually play out the drama of of god's redemption of god's eternal relationship to the church mm-hmm. 
So, so we are playing that out in our relationship and modeling it to our kids, but also to the world. What, what it means to that God is loving His church and He loves all people, and uh, and what it looks like. Uh, so th this is really a way to preach the gospel, actually. All right, I want to ask you this: What is a man's role? in marriage then afterwards i want you to explain what a female role is in marriage yeah yeah uh, i will use the the, the light your marriage framework because i think it's actually more helpful because we all know about you know the man should love his wife as the christ christ loved the church and the wife should submit to her husband and, mm -hmm. and these things but the question is how, how do you really live this out mm -hmm. and what does it does it look like and, and so I, I would like to introduce the the light your marriage framework you can find it on on their website delightyourmarriage.com shout out to delight your marriage <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 big shout out to you guys but continue please yeah and they have a free podcast and free resources and and they're on the free resources you can find this and also the their ma marriage what do you call it health assessment mm -hmm. so you can do a like a health assessment for marriage Anyways, so so men have three. This is the, like the framework and the philosophy about from the delight of marriage, and that we we have been used using in our marriage with great success. So men basically have three needs. Uh, he, what he wants from his wife is first. Number one is respect. Mm -hmm. He don't want to be murdered. He don't want to be <laughs> criticized or. Um, what else could you put into this? So basically, there is some some part in the the man's heart that uh, he desires respect, and when he gets that from his wife, especially from his wife, mm -hmm. he feels blessed in a certain way. He really feels loved. So that's number one. It's a, it's a deep need for a man, and it, and the second thing is um, to be admired so it's basically a man have have a deep question in his heart uh, he wants to know if he is good enough am i strong enough do i have what it takes mm -hmm. to am i strong enough and uh, and a wife have a special role in that she's very close to him and she can actually mm -hmm cut him by the knees by criticizing him or she can lift him up and when she does that when she when he she's like a how do you say cheerleader you yeah. you, you cheer him and 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 kind of give him the responsibility to make decisions and let him fail and believe in him even if he doesn't know really what he's doing <laughs> and, and so so that, that's what we really need from our wives mm -hmm. somebody who, who believe in us and the last one i would know already yeah tell me what is it they need sex <laughs> sex yeah yeah it's yeah. very important so for a man this was actually one of the things that that made me really like this podcast because uh, I, I when I was in my teens I, I struggled very much with pornography and it took a very long it was a very long battle and I, I had to really die from myself mm -hmm before I got free from it. And I got free, actually. But in that process, you kind of, you, I lost something of the, you know, when, when sex has been basically your greatest enemy, so to say, you kind of, you had to really break out from it and, and you kind of lose the, the understanding that sex is actually something good mm -hmm. and it's a gift of God. So when I listened to this podcast and, 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 and I started to hear things like the male sex drive is actually a blessing and it's God's design. God has made it like this. Can you say that one more time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, so your sex drive is actually a blessing. It's for the marriage uh, in the right context, of course. But when it's lived out properly, it's a blessing for the marriage. And... I didn't really see it like that. I, my sex drive had, had ma mainly brought me into trouble. <laughs> so, so when I heard this, I, I realized that, of course, I knew it. God has created me yeah. with, with a sex drive. But, and, and a man have actually 
10 times more testosterone in his body, naturally, than a woman. Uh, and so God has made it like this, that. And it's not like a, a cruel joke from his part. It's actually God's design. And, and when, when you, we understand how to use it, it's actually a blessing. So, so we, we have a need for sexual intimacy that is God designed. And it's actually not enough for a man to, to have a, a woman that is kind of, what do you call it, duty sex. That's not what a man wants. Would you say? Duty sex. So, oh, like duty sex. Okay, yeah, yeah. where it feels, I understand yeah, what yeah. you mean. So it's just like, she's like, oh. Well, I, I will do it for him yeah. because he want, needs it, but I, 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 I will be at some other place in my head. Yeah. So, so, so many women think like this, men only want sex. That's all what they want. And, and it's actually not true. Man, a man, what he really wants is wholehearted sexual intimacy. Mm-hmm. And that means she's actually there when, when you, she's enjoying herself mm-hmm. and it's a part of, you know. Or you say maybe they both enjoy it. Enjoy it, yeah. Together. Yeah. And so, so this is, let's say, every husband's dream to have a, a wholehearted sexual intimacy. And there is variety, there is enough frequency and, and, and there are visual visual aspects since we men are very visual and all these things are god's design and when we discover it it can actually become a great bonding tool for the marriage mm-hmm. yeah so so that's basically yeah. the man's three needs the, yeah. man, the husband's three needs so essentially what you explain is almost kind of the opposite uh, I said, like, what are the man's role and the woman's role? And you explain what a man wants from a woman. Yeah. You know what I mean, so yeah. I guess you can explain the opposite. Like, yeah, what does a woman need from a man? Then mm-hmm. if you want to break down actually what the roles are for like what a man. Yeah. Sh- I mean, I, or maybe this is the roles like this is what a woman wants. This is what you need to do. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you say that? Yeah. All right. So can you explain yeah. what a yeah. man, what a woman needs yeah. for us, please? Yeah. So, so <clears throat> basically my role as a husband is not to tell my wife that she should do her homework so to say my role as a husband is to do my part and that's that is to love my wife very well let's pause for a second can you unpack what that means yeah like to not do her her homework can yeah yeah what so, you mean by that? so so i i just share the three the three needs of a husband all right so i i would be very tempted to say to my wife okay I, I listened to the Delight Your Marriage podcast. Here is what you have to do now. <laughs> These are the three things you have to do to me. And do it right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that doesn't work. It doesn't work. So, so what I will do is instead, I will do my part that I will share mm-hmm. now. So what does a woman need? That, that's my job. Uh, and she also have three basic needs. And maybe you heard about the, the five love languages. Mm-hmm. So this is a really good tool, but I would say this, this, is go, this goes even more deeper. It's more basic. So, so you can use both on top of, of one another, I would say. So for a woman, what she needs, she needs to feel safe. Uh, a woman has a need to feel safe. And we as husbands need to provide that for her. That means, for example, no criticizing or uh, being lording over your wife, being harsh. I was very harsh. When you say lording over her, yeah. what do you mean by that? Is that? Let me see if I know what I mean, and you can say, no, yeah. you don't get this right. Lording, lording over her, do you mean like checking upon her, making sure she's doing the right thing, where she's going, and like, yeah. like being like a, a helicopter over her? Or controlling. Controlling, is that what you mean? Yeah, okay. controlling her behavior from the outside. What you want to do is to, we, that, I, I think this is a principle for all relationships, not only in the, in the marriage, and especially if you're a leader, yeah. we don't want to control people from the outside. We want yeah. to influence their heart. And we want them to, to kind of want to do the right thing mm-hmm. from the inside, not because I tell you you have to do it. I, I, of course I could do that, but it, it doesn't really <laughs> bless the relationship and build a strong connection between us if I do that. Uh, and and it's, it's not 
Mm-hmm. When Jesus teach about leadership, this is not the the, the kingdom's way of, of of exercising leadership. That's the worldly way to do it. So you exercise authority. Mm-hmm. That's what Jesus is saying. We should be servants and, and even like slaves when we are leaders. So yeah, we serve when we lead. So yeah, anyway, she needs to feel safe and, and criticizing, you, you keep your word, you come home on time when you promise something, everything, this kind of thing. She can trust you. She, she knows where, where, that she can trust on you. All these things are very important if you want her to feel safe. And uh, for a woman, if if you really want her to, we talked about sex. If you really want her to want to have sex with you, then she needs to feel safe. That's it? Yeah. So if, if she isn't safe, <laughs> she will not feel comfortable in the bedroom. So it, it, this goes hand in hand. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let me ensure you. It, it doesn't work very well if you are have been criticizing her. <laughs> I tried right. that. I tried that. Don't do that. <laughs> but I know you said like you want sex from your wife, make it feel safe. Yeah, feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And 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 yeah, all these things. But I I will now share. This, this yeah. is if you really want to attract your wife to you to yourself. That's actually what you want to do. You want to attract her to you and even more to Christ. So basically what you want to do, all, all what I'm, I'm talking about right now, both for men and women, it's actually becoming more like Christ. Mm-hmm. It's uh, letting the fruit of the spirits, the spirit grow in you, like love and kindness and, and joy and peace, all these things, self-control. Mm-hmm. When these things are present in your life, you will you will have a good relationship it's it's very simple basically yeah but anyways so the second part the second need a woman has is to feel known and it might be a little bit tricky the word but it's actually i i, I try to explain it as somebody need to see how beautiful she is both on the outside but even more on the inside Somebody needs to see that. Or yeah, what? and you as a husband should be that person. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, she wants to feel known, and that also means some of her, uh, some aspects of her personality, personality might be actually weaknesses or bad things. But you want to see those also and love her as she is right now. You don't try to only, you know. Jesus loves us as we are right now. He tried to change us and, and want to make us more holy, but he loves us as we are right now. And he sees every aspect of our life. And mm-hmm. we want to do the same for our wife. So that is to be known. Somebody that sees her beauty. And this third part is wholeheartedly cherished. And these are the things you are very good at when you are dating. If you are, if you if you had a, like a da- dating relationship before you got married, so if you're really smooth, this part was the part that you were good at. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it, it's the presence, it's you know making sure it's the details. You really want mm-hmm. to make sure everything is good when you you take her to maybe to a restaurant. You you know what she likes and dislikes and and try to really make her feel special that's basically you you try to win her heart over and over again okay yeah and pursue her yeah so, okay so that's the three basic needs for a for a woman all right so let's recap this again so everybody got <laughs> yeah. so for so women need to be doing for their women so first she needs to feel safe two she needs to feel uh go ahead tell me number no 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 she needs to feel known and the third one is that she needs to be cherished. Yeah, wholeheartedly. Cherish wholeheartedly. So if you plan the game in the beginning, you got to keep playing the game forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. And recapping for the men. Go ahead. You just said if you want to just listen three. So what a woman needs to be doing for a man, her role. I guess. Respect. Mm-hmm. And admired. And the last one, the best one? Is sex. Okay. Yeah. Wholehearted sexual intimacy. Yeah. Okay. 
Now I'm kidding about the last one. I think all, <laughs> all me respect, you know. No, it, no, it, it's, it's really important. But well. all of them are all, important. All of them are important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They play together. So submitting. That's a big topic nowadays, and that's a a word that's even some girls in the church will look at you like this yeah, yeah, about yeah. nowadays. Can you explain like what submitting looks like? Then I guess you also need to explain, you know, the part of the husband role of loving his wife as yeah. Christ loved the church because women think like that where submitting is like the worst thing that they can do when like loving. I'm gonna go ahead and stop speaking. You go ahead and explain yeah, yeah, yeah. it for us, please. No, no, it's it's really a it's a difficult concept concept in these days because uh, we have a very strong egalitarian uh, <clears throat> culture right now. Fem feminism, maybe. Yeah, I would say feminism is is part of it. But I said feminism, yeah, feminist. Excuse me. But but yeah, but but it, basically, we in in one sense. We, 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 we as Christians and we believe we who have a complementary view on the sexes. Mm -hmm. So we, we also have a, we, we understand that, okay, Jesus has died for both men and women. He, he loves men and women the same. Of course. The forgiveness of sin is for both men and women. They both have access to the throne of grace. So in these aspects, the, the value of the man and woman is the same. It's no difference. And they are both created in the image of God. There's no difference in, in, in that aspect. But in this, in this time, in this creation, when God has created man and, and woman, he created them to have different roles. And that's the complementary view. So the woman, when, when in a marriage relationship specifically, there is some difference in, 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 in when it comes to authority. So, so that's how we understand it. And uh, So let's dive into it, submitting. Yeah, submitting. So I, I would start with, 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 with Christ actually, because Christ submitted to his Father. And, and we have to get that right, because otherwise we, we will mess up everything else. If, if, do we really believe that Jesus submitting to the Father actually was a good thing. Mm -hmm. Something that was beautiful and worth pursuing. And if we get that right, I think everything else will flow into that. So, so Jesus submitted to the Father. He, he actually was struggling to go to the cross. And you see that in the Gethsemane. But he said, not my will, but your will. Let your will be done. So he, he struggled with it, but he did it because he wanted to submit to his father's will. And for a wife then, what does it look like? Yeah, yeah. I would say, just as Christ submitted to his father, or the church is submitting to Christ, as Ephesians is putting it, a woman should submit to her husband. What, is, what does it look like when a woman submits? Sometimes people get the picture. I, 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 I totally understand this. This is so, for our culture, this is so weird that I would submit to somebody else. I'm a free person, you know. We are in a democratic society. Why, 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 why would I submit to anybody? Uh, uh, you know. So, but when this is played out well, it, you wouldn't even notice. That, that's how I would explain it. I, I'm not, for example, in my relationship, I'm not telling my wife all the time what she should do and not do. We don't do that. I, I don't have to do that. She knows what I want and, you know, not want. And, and I try to fill her needs. She try to fill my needs. And, and we try to never get into those places where we start to argue about whose task is this or who should be doing this. We, we try to never get there because it's silly to fight and argue. It's actually unbiblical. And it's sin. It's sin <laughs> to fight and argue. About task? About anything. Or, 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 For, right, fight and argue, of course. Yeah, it, like, it's the work of the flesh. The, not to get off topic, but like yeah. task, you don't think that you guys should talk about task and how things be like, hey, I want to do this. 
can you do this? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can, you, you might have some disagreements. That's, yeah. that's okay. I mean, not, for example, let's say simply, hey, I want to, I want to work a little bit more, stay a little later, can you be with the kids and things like that, but, and we agree upon these tasks, then you just be like, nah, I don't feel like doing this. Who's, yeah, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that's totally okay. And if you are in a, in a good place in your relationship, that will be no problem. You, you can express your needs and she can express her needs and you kind of negotiate because you will anyway have to do that. Whatever kind of model of, you know, authority you have, you, you will have to negotiate. You can't just say, I decided this and, and you have to submit. Th that's very unwise <laughs> and it doesn't work very well. And I, I, I even met, I, I even know about couples that have a, a, an egalitarian view of the sexes. And it, it's no guarantee that you will not fight. So it's no guarantee. Just because, actually it can be even more fighting in an egalitarian marriage because then everybody want to, you know, the wife want to have her way and the husband want to have his way and you're kind of equal. So now you have to fight about it. And, and it, it might even get worse. I, mean, I couldn't help but just butt in with my thought because my thought is when you started speaking about submitting and it made me thinking about a term that my a term that my coaches used in college for football in the team environment but more my strength and conditioning coach but getting to the point he always say like if everyone buys in you need to buy into the program if everyone buys in who can stop us you know what I mean so I look at this mm -hmm. effort and this word buy-in, maybe some people don't understand this expression because some of my uh, viewers from Europe, like buy-in is pretty much, you have the same mindset and this is the mindset you need to do this. This is the mindset is uh, being together, working together, like fall in line to the program. I guess it's the best word. Fall in line, like just do what you ask, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if everybody on the team does their role and do their job, not that your job is going to be done perfectly all the time, but if yeah, you yeah. do your job, you buying in to the program. So would you say like submitting is just buying into the program? Hey, this, you know, this is what your husband won. This is the, pro well, first of all, you know, this is what God wants for you. But then also God made your husband a different individual. So you kind of got to know what he wants and he kind of knows what you want, but just buy into the program that you guys set for each other. Yeah. And it's a team effort. Am I, let me know if there's a flaw in what I just stated. No, you know, I try to break down something that's no, big but impact it really small. Yeah, and and if you use that analogy, I, I would say Christ is our coach. And for sure. We both have to submit to Christ. So it's not like the man can do whatever he wants. He, if he breaks the rules of Christ, he, he is still, you know, way off the chart and he has to repent or or he will be, you know dealing with Christ <laughs> that, that's not right. a good thing to, right, right. you know Jesus will deal with you if, <laughs> if you don't treat your whim, woman well yeah. so so it's not that you can do whatever you want just because you are a, a leader in the household or a head of the wife yeah so if you agree to my analogy I, I would say as you said you guys on the same team your team let's say it's team Jalo but this <laughs> yeah. team you know Christ is the coach but I'm the captain. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. The, yeah. I'm the captain. Of yeah, the yeah, team, yeah. Whatever. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if we answered the question directly. So, what exactly does submitting look like? Where we say it's just buying into the program. Yeah, and you you submit to the leadership of the husband. And and I, I would also say like this, and this is maybe where it get, gets you know hard because who who wouldn't want to to ad submit to a husband that is loving you like Christ is loving the church who would if you if you would have been married to Jesus wouldn't you want to submit to him of course but this is the tricky part this is the hard part we okay I as a husband let me start there because it's easier than to, to you know to, to explain this I as a husband need to love my wife regardless of how she treats me back and a wife let she, let's say she is the one reading that passage about submitting. Mm -hmm. She needs to submit. It's right for her to submit. It's good for her to submit, regardless of how her husband is treating her. And of course, 
there might be violence and, and abuse and these things and you have to protect yourself and set some boundaries mm-hmm. of course but but in, like in general yeah I focus on my part that's my job my job is not to tell my wife what she should do or not do mm-hmm. it's already there in the Bible I, I know what my I should do I, I should love my wife and that's what I want to do so if I learn from this game plan is simply again Christ is the coach husband is the captain or sure he's the captain yeah. but we all in the same team we're working together yeah and the rules for us is simply in the Bible You yeah. do your part of the rules in the Bible, I do my part, and we learn to love each other from the first philosophy that you said, the three things that a man needs yeah. and the three things that a woman needs. Yeah. Um, why do you feel like women don't want to submit nowadays? It's 2024. Why do women do not want to submit? Now, I, I think we we have a broader problem in the society, and it's called individ, individualism. Yeah. yeah. And, and that has done a great harm to the church, the society, to, to and to families. And Would you also say this word is independent? I don't need anybody? Yeah, independent. Feminism is a part of it, but it's actually broader. Because feminism, it, it, basically what it is, it, it's women want to to challenge the role of a, of a husband or be it's like women fighting men. You know, I, I talk now about militant feminism. Mm-hmm. I don't talk about, you know, women women's uh, we're not talking about human rights yeah which is or normal, if you know you, what I mean? like yeah, same same thing. salary for yeah, the same for sure. job of course that, that's like basic thing but now we talk about fighting or being aggressively militant against men i think this is actually in the in genesis you you will see this conflict right after the fall you, god said that the husband will rule over you and, and you will desire him and and he will rule over you that that's the woman's yeah. consequence and i think actually that is the whole feminism versus uh what's the what do you, man, man man chauvinism yeah. conflict right there yeah. and sometimes men will have the upper hand in the society sometimes the women have the upper hand maybe now the women actually have more the upper hand and men are kind of feeling they they are you know It's not good to be a man right now if you they feel bad about themselves just because they are yeah. men. And I, I think neither of those approaches are very good. Men should not push down a woman uh, or rule over her, a lord over her, and, and a woman should not, you know, fight the husband by or the men in general by, you know, being angry and militant and hateful. And I think that this is the wrong way to, to solve it. Neither approach is good. We, we need harmony and peace to work together in peace. Okay, let's move over to, to men loving their wives. What, I, I guess that already answers the question. I was gonna, my question was simply, if you want to add more to it, what does husbands loving their wives look like? It, does it look like the three concepts you said in the beginning? Yeah. Or is there anything more? Yeah, I, maybe I should add that Being a husband, the, the way Christ wants us to be a husband, is actually you have to die to yourself, and you you have to really take into consideration mm-hmm. your wife's needs. And sometimes we think we 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 think about our own needs first, and, and we shouldn't do that as husbands. We we should think about our kids and especially uh, uh, even more so our wife and, mm-hmm. and love her well so i hope that comes very clear from the, this you know discussion about submission yeah as a husband i need to die from myself and, and putting myself first i need to sacrifice myself yeah that's the kind of love we talk about we had a conversation a few days ago when i was at your house um, at dinner time And we were talking about the fruits of the spirit, and you were talking about that looking sexy, you know? Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about why the fruit of the spirit, charisma in a person is sexy for both men and women? Yeah, actually, <clears throat> so so this comes back to the the woman, the woman 
woman's needs, she needs to feel safe and admired and wholehearted, heartedly cherished. So actually what we're talking about here is the fruit of the spirit. We talk about if you, to love your wife. Mm -hmm. So that's the fruit of the spirit, love. There is kindness. Uh, there is, uh, uh, let's see if I get this in English, joy, peace. All these things are very, very attractive. And if you really, <laughs> If you really want to attract your wife, it's not the big muscles. It's not the, you know, I don't know what, what we as men maybe think is attractive. They probably think that money. Money, yeah, power, I don't know, success. What she really wants is a husband that is kind to her and understands her feelings, listening. Oh, oh, oh that we have some homework to do there. Listening, oh, yeah. no, kidding. you know, these things is really attractive to a woman. And so in that sense, if you want to attract your wife towards yourself, you have to attract her to the fruit of the spirit or to Christ. And, and that's very sexy to a woman, if you put it like that. The, it kind of, it's the, the framework where sexual intercourse should take part, so to say. You think so, that's really like attractive to her or that's just something that feels good for her? No, I, I, let me put it like this to really explain it. <clears throat> it might sound, sound weird to say that the fruit of the spirits are, are like sexy to a woman. But, but let me, I think it may be the other way. If I see a woman being joyful and just in her you know, feminine behavior because of the fruit of the spirit, I think, man, yeah, that's sexy. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. But I think the other way, I think yeah. she, she wants to, because you said some things like she wanted to be heard and you know those things I think that makes her just feel, feel yeah. really good to you and that might do some things to her her body to make her want to be physical with you yeah yeah so <clears throat> basically uh, a woman she this is like this is really the opposite so a man let's say a man come home from work he's very stressed mm -hmm. And he maybe his boss has been harsh with him. Yeah. And and for him, let's say his wife is home and the kids are at sleep, he would be perfectly fine. It would actually be very healing for him to just have sex with her wife. So just so his way to wind down and to get rid of stress is to have sex. For a woman it's it's totally the opposite. She needs to be relaxed and calm and safe before she even wants to consider having sex. So she is totally the opposite when it comes to how, how she functions. So that's why it's very important for us husband to, to display the, the fruit of the spirit in order for her to enjoy sex. So, so that, that's maybe how I would explain it. So when a woman is stressed, she don't want to have sex. She wants to just be yeah, tired, <laughs> uh, feeling there is chaos in the home. Yeah, you know. So for us men, we are very. Our brain is actually this is brain science. So our brain is we are compartmentalizing things. We can put the work in a box and yeah. put it aside. Yeah. Now it's time for sex. Yeah. And for a woman, it's more like a wardrobe. You open the wardrobe and everything is connected and everything is there. Kind of everything is connected to everything. So mm -hmm. if one area, she has stress in one area, it will affect also all the other areas. Yeah. Okay. 